I mean, I yeah. went to Haiti not simply to try to find the drugs, quote unquote, used to make zombies. I went to examine a phenomenon, the Haitian zombie, that had been used in an explicitly racist way to denigrate a people in their incredible religion and try to make sense out of sensation. You know, you know I mean, you know, why is it uh, that when we talk of the great religions of the world, Africa's left out? How did we possibly come to see voodoo as something evil and black magic when the word just is a phone word from Dahomey that means spirit or God? And then when you actually peel back the, 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 the reality of voodoo, it's a quintessentially democratic faith, you know, that the believers have direct access to the divine. I mean, Haitians used to always say, you white people go to church and speak about God, we dance in the temple and become God, right? So, and the same thing with coca, it's, it's, not, it's not just to, uh, it's not enough in my mind to delineate the, I don't know, the phylogeny of the cultivated, you know, of the, the wild species or even do a nutritional study. You, you have to, you have to build the argument that denying the people of the Andes coca is not like denying coffee to the Turks or beer to the Germans or, or tea to the English. No, it's it, it, if you understand the role that coca plays in not just daily life but in ritual life, in spiritual life, to deny people coca is um, an act of cultural genocide. So for me, you know, my mission has always been, um, there's always been a kind of a political activist kind of angle to it. Yeah. I've seen my work with languages, you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, just waking people up to the fact that, uh, you know, we're living through an era where half the languages of the world aren't being spoken to children and no one's really, until relatively recently, and, 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 and uh, certainly I was one of the early voices in this, you yeah, know, what do you think is lost when a language disappears forever? Well, a language isn't just vocabulary or grammar. A, a language is a flash of the human spirit. It's a vehicle through which the soul of every culture comes into the material world. Every language I once wrote is an old growth forest of the mind, um, an ecosystem of uh, you know possibilities, a watershed of thought. Probably the the, the most important. Uh, scientific revelations of our lifetimes had two things. First, Christmas Eve, 1968, Apollo going around the dark side of the moon, emerging to see not a sunrise or a moonrise, but an earthrise, right? And for the first time, we really understood that we live on a finite planet, as the astronauts famously said, floating in the velvet void of space. And and that moment's going to be remembered for 10,000 years. And, you know, until that moment, uh, not a single country had a ministry of environment. You know, um, you, you know, until that moment, just getting people to stop throwing garbage out of the car window was a great environmental victory. No one spoke of the biosphere or biodiversity. Now those are terms that are part of the language of school children, right? But the other, the other great revelation, epiphany, also came about at the end of a great journey, but not into space, but in the very fiber of our beings. And in our lifetimes, geneticists have finally proven it to be true. What philosophers have always pondered is an impossibility, and that is the fact that we really are all brothers and sisters. And I don't mean that in the spirit of hippie ethnography. I mean, quite literally, we know from genetic analysis um, that the genetic endowment of humanity is a continuum. Race is an absolute fiction. Um, we're all cut from the same genetic cloth. We're all descendants of a very small number of people uh, who are, well, some who stayed in Africa, of course, but those who also left Africa and embarked on this incredible kind of diaspora that brought the human spirit over 2,500 generations, um, 40,000 years, to every corner of the habitable world. But the real message of that is that if we're cut from the same genetic cloth, we all share the same genius. And how that genius is then exploited or, or, or developed is just a matter of choice. So that old Victorian idea that there was a hierarchy of culture, and this came right out of Darwin, if species evolved, surely cultures evolved. And the whole idea of social Darwinian thinking, which was birthed by Herbert Spencer in anthropology, 
imagine human cultures as an ascending evolutionary process of development that, curiously enough, left us at the top of the heap, right? Yeah. And 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 you know it was even delineated by people like uh, you know Tyler and religion and and, and you know and, and uh, Morgan. That you know we went from the savage to the barbarian to the civilized of the Strand of London, right? And well, there's an assumption that technological development is well. That was part of the game. The part, the part of the game is because we were because our <clears throat> our achievement was it was a, it, it, it was a stacked deck because we were particularly clever when it came to technological wizardry. We defined that as a definition of achievement, right? And that helped place us at the apex of a pyramid that went down the slopes to the so-called savages of the world. 